Welcome back to my channel for data, machine learning, and tech career. In today's video, I'm going to go over, you know, how do you market yourself in non-technical and technical interviews and things you need to watch out for for the technical interviews. So whenever I look at job listings, I kind of categorize them into two different categories. One is a category of a jobs that I like, and the other kind are like the dream jobs that, you know, jobs that you're like, oh my gosh, it would be so badass if I got this job. And so I kind of group them into two different groups. And then from there, you the good strat, overall strategy is to start with the jobs that you like and potentially starting maybe from a smaller company. And then, um, you know, once you get your interview, you know, skills going and you feel like you're like more confident in your interview skills because it is a different skill than your day to day job skills. And then so after that, you feel like you have enough practice, then you can, uh, you know, get land your try to apply to your dream jobs. So if I'm getting a phone interview for this position, for example, just whatever I found on LinkedIn, uh, if they're seeking for a data analyst position and a growing data team, great. Uh, but a key, really key thing to note here is that it's for a marketing and growth position. And this is so important because, I mean, there's so many different data analyst positions out there. So then you want to make sure that your conversation with the hiring manager will have to be very well prepared on a marketing side, like click through rates, your, how do you run A-B tests on campaigns, and those kind of things are very highly available for this kind of positions. So make sure that you do that. And the other thing is that you want to make sure you understand the company because, I mean, marketing strategy can be very different across different industries. Trees. And you definitely want to look into, you know, oh, what like what kind of industry is in it's more in the apparel and fashion. So maybe they focus more on Pinterest uh, advertising or Instagram advertising and kind of seeing how many employees uh, kind of helps. Maybe that help you understand like how many data, uh, you know, data analysts the team would have because of the size of a company. And that will tell you, you know, kind of the general idea of like maybe how the team is structured. But then also, you know, making sure that you go to Google and try to look for the company website because that can actually tell you kind of the, the target uh, audience they are targeting, especially like they said it's apparel, but they're actually focusing on underwears and bras. So, you know, different marketing strategies uh, will differ depends on the industry. So we definitely want to be very familiar with like what company it is what kind of product they're selling before you go into your interview. Before I jump into how to make your note cards for your interviews, please make sure you subscribe to learn more about data and please leave a comment below on like, you know, little tricks or little notes that you think is super helpful to get you uh, to land a job or for your interviews. So for a lot of non-technical interviews, uh, they really like to ask you about like projects that you have done and then ask a lot of like follow-up questions or even like, uh, you know, behavioral questions. So say, oh, tell me about a time you had a conflict or tell me about a time where you had to work with cross-functional teams and these are all type of questions that are all gonna go back to this list that I you know you you should definitely always come up with like a list of three projects that you really you know you think it's like really impressive and that you can really impress the other person and have a story to tell and that all your interview questions should focus on these three projects because if you try to like think of like some other projects on top of your head you're not going to be able to answer the questions as well as you did if you actually have a list of three projects and then also making sure you write bullet points down on like you know the things about these projects are so unique and then think about uh, behavioral questions that can relate to these projects and I my my rule of thumb is that I always focus on three because I have experienced in the past where I try to just think of like a random project to answer the question but then I realized that you know maybe the follow-up question asks more detail about a project but then maybe I I don't remember on top of my head or like I kind of have to like not sure how to answer those questions so then I kind of feel like I wasn't answered them correctly or like answer them uh, in the best way. So then you know have focus on the three projects really helps me to uh, remember projects well and also because everyone asks you a lot of questions about these three projects every time someone asks you a question that you don't really know how to answer to you can always like write them down to make sure that you will be able to answer those questions the next time and then you're getting better better answer your questions based on these three projects.
So just like a quick two examples that I had for my interviews, like I like to talk about this project I did to unify all the regional data into a standardized dashboard across the globe. The reason why I like uh, talking about this project is because there was so much conflict between all the regional managers because every region like America versus Europe and Asia, they all have their own kind of filters and uh, understanding of how they can, what how they can compute the metrics. And it's just really, you know, it has a lot of like different difficulties about this this project was about like working with cross-functional teams and it also uh, there was a lot of uh, examples of like how to handle bad data across different regions because Europe might have you know different ways of filtering out data because of the regional data quality issues or so and so I thought it was like a great demonstration of the cross-functional working with cross-functional teams and uh, handling bad data and working with like a global, you know, scale. And then the other example I like to give is running an ABC test. So the reason why I like talking about this project is because it's a great project to talk about, you know, my relationship with working with engineers and product managers, because that is a very key uh, skill set to have as a data analyst. That we need to work with the engineers in general to be able to get the data that we need versus, you know, product manager to answer the questions that how do we prove that this, uh, you know, this treatment is best or this treatment should be going live and so you know we have a very clear of the key metrics to determine success of the project because a lot of uh, non-technical stakeholders or interviewers really like to ask like well, how do you determine success of a project and this is a great opportunity to kind of sh show like a very key you know this is a key metric that we really want to track and how does this test help it determine like if we should make one decision or versus the other. And during an interview, when an interviewer asks you about like working with cross-functional teams, you make sure that like, you have to hit all these teams that you know that you actually work with, but then you don't think about them because they're just second second nature to you. And that you want to make sure that you hit, you know, your how do you work with these different roles in your interview so then they know that you have worked with like cross-functional teams. And that you should always think of the you know your relationship with all these different this. Uh, different roles as like uh, to both two directions that like you have work with the product managers who are the people asking you for requests and asking for data but you should always ask them back as like what's the business impact on this or how does this answer your business question like what kind of business question are you trying to answer so that you can get a better idea because we know the data better way better than the product managers do right so then we want to add as a consultant to help them understand like what kind of data is available and how to how can we come up with methodology to help answer those questions and the other piece is like you're working with engineers so whenever there's new features coming up or new product uh, changes that we have you always want to make sure that engineers have the right logging ready before you have to do any sort of analysis because if the engineers don't have the logging ready then uh, by the time you need to do analysis you don't have any historical data you can and then the other piece is working with data engineers is that you want to make sure that you have a great relationship working with data engineers it's like you know, making sure you have very like clear of like you know how do we how do we want to restructure this data or like even writing a feature guide to help understanding you know making sure the data is processed the right the way you want it and that you will help speed up your analysis a lot faster. During my interview for the last two weeks, I've been asked this question, which I thought was very interesting, and I definitely have been asked about for this question for multiple times and so I thought it would be a good idea to share with you guys is that what makes a huge difference between a good analyst and a great analyst and the answer I've gotten from you know from my interviewer or kind of like just seeing my response of like how they reacted to it kind of helped me to kind of uh, finalize into these three different answers so first thing is that you know most of executives don't uh, they ha having dashboards having reports having excel files are great but that doesn't like, you know, executive doesn't have time to go in and dig the numbers themselves and understanding everything that you put it together. They actually need some sort of like, you know, one executive summary insights to help them, you know, get to the key points right away and having like being able to make a decision from that report right away. And so that is actually what a lot of executives care about. And so you should definitely talk about that, uh, you know, in your interviews with the executives. Like, you know, how do you bring insights? How do you translate? 
translate into a business actions and that you found the, the, you know your, your reporting and that's really important and then the second thing is that you know you can be the ones that are more passive where people ask you questions you kind of do this do a data pull or do a quick analysis or do a analysis and then turn back to them and not ask them much questions because that uh, maybe you think it's very straightforward and it's really quick but a good a great analyst i think uh, would ask a lot of questions about you know how does this data help you and what kind of questions are you trying to answer and i think hitting that like asking questions or asking the right question is also definitely very key in your interviews that they want people to actually understand the business and not just simply polling data for them and so that's also a very key trait into a data and, and a great data analyst and the third thing is like you know instead of a People always asking you for everything. Uh, I like to think of it as like we are a consultant and we should be proactively like maybe I saw like maybe I was re uh, someone requested to add, look at the trend of uh, revenue or something and then I saw an, a, like a, maybe like a huge potential of like increasing revenue in a certain area and that I'm more proactive like showing it oh I saw and from the exploratory analysis I did for you I saw uh, this trend and I, I saw something very interesting I want to deep dive into it and then proactively I uh, kind of uh, proposing projects for technical interviewers they'd like to ask you more like a case study question Questions such as like you know what do you do when you see a weird pattern in revenue and so like for example in this case on the, the for the chart on the right you can see that oh well October has a huge spike of like our revenue but then uh, the question goes down into like what do you do next right and then so oftentimes you'll say well I want to take check the data quality to make sure what we don't have dupes in our data or you know for that month we don't have any days that we have weird numbers or just a bug or something and usually the the interviewer will tell you oh okay there's no problem with the data what would you do next and then this is when you uh, you know start thinking about okay what are the other possibilities and like well, sure we see a huge spike from September September to October but maybe that is because due to seasonality and we want to check like year over year trend instead of month over month due to seasonality so that's something that you can definitely mention and the other thing is like thinking about the formula of what contributes into your revenue so for example if it's a Facebook that you have you know your ads revenue then the number of users on your platform will definitely be a very key component into your revenue formula and so thinking about you know percentage of new user growth or percentage of existing users growth and like resurrected users like all these different types of users that's helping you to you know gain your revenue checking those will help you understand if that's normal or not and then the other thing to ask you know your product managers like oh is there any new product features that we launched that's making more money uh, like due to like for example if like added a subscription service uh like you know additional service that you just added and then that's generating more money for you then that can be part of the revenue formula and there are any new product features uh product changes that can really help with uh you know the revenue like maybe the buy button looks different and that's why it's tr like you know it's spinning up a lot of more money than you ever uh, imagined the last thing i would kind of look at is like the distribution of your dollar amount for every transaction uh the reason why you look at that is because if there's any like you know weird behaviors and in terms of like oh maybe there was a bug in terms of like the dollar amount i was charged uh maybe it went from a ten dollars to a hundred dollars by accident and then so that would kind of help you to spot those weird transactions and to help tell you that the revenue that's why the revenue looks weird and we just definitely fix that and last thing is kind of like you know the sql data exercise that you do all the time on your in your interviews and that uh, they like to trick you kind of um so like for example in this table you have id which is all unique but then you see the name of the product is not unique and and then you have count and most oftentimes you want to ask like okay why is it normal that you know you have the same product name but different id like do they actually mean different items or are they just because of the nature of like how it's logged that every single time something is added is automatically a new id then that means it's actually duplicating records right and then you see that account is actually the same as well then there's a high potential that that is actually duplicated uh, data that you don't want to include for both of them and so this is kind of like the trickier like 
a little tricky questions that people will ask to see, you know, when you see a data like this, what do you do? And these are the kind of questions you need to ask and then making sure. And then, for example, like this is, in this case, like just an example that the scene is like, oh, they have the same count. But what if they have different counts, but they're actually still the same item, then which one would you take? Is it based on timestamp? Is it based on maybe the higher count makes more sense because uh, that the older, the other, you know, order that was not completed or whatever. And so you want to take a maximum of your counts or whatever. And so you want to ask all these questions to your interviewer to clarify, you know, what's the best approach to solve this problem? Because you might need to use a window function, you might need to a max function. And uh, that also really depends on what an interviewer says about the data set.